We've all heard about project creep, where you do something and that unveils lots of other things that you have to do. But what happens if you get stuck in your tracks by even the decisions that you have to make and those start creeping up? Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today I'm talking about the real challenge with the delays that come with decision creep. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by MantisMarine.com, maker of the Mantis Anchor, now available in models with and without a roll bar. Proven to set reliably in the most challenging bottoms, the Mantis Anchor digs like no other, making anchoring safer and boating more enjoyable. Get set for boating season with our spring sale, offering 20% off any order through April 28, 2020. Use the code SPRING2020, MantisMarine.com. So here's the thing with working on a boat. And if you're getting ready to go cruising or getting ready to go weekending around, however long your cruise is that you're talking about doing, you're probably working on your boat. And there are delays that are associated with any of these projects. What happens is you say, I'm going to go and install a water pump. And you go down to the boat with your water pump in hand and you get there and you realize that actually there are hoses that need to be replaced. And then, whoops, you actually need to replace the whole through hull that's there, which means you need to schedule a haul out. And it just is endless. And a quick project winds up taking eight times as long as you thought it would to begin with. Project creep is something that we've all experienced. But there's another aspect to project creep that's decision creep. And this is one that you wouldn't think would be that hard, right? So here's an example for us in our recent, one of our recent angles of our boat project. We said, okay, today's project is we're going to go down and shape the bulkhead and prep it for installation. And the bulkhead was going to go on the port side, forming the inboard edge of the quarter berth. Besides the fact that I could have that nice, simple sentence, it doesn't sound like a lot of work, right? Shape the bulkhead, prep it for installation. I don't have to go into all the things that we had to do to get to the point that we could even say that particular sentence. For this particular bulkhead, which forms the inboard side of the quarter berth, and by inboard, I mean it's the space along, basically it's kind of the wall if you think about it, when we're, we come down the companionway ladder, it's sort of the wall that's right there on the port side. So it's going to be very visible. It has a number of different parts to it, uh, meaning that it it goes to the front of the quarter berth, and then there's a part that's underneath the fridge, and so that needs to be cut out. Do we have to split it into two parts? Because there's a part that is going to be totally separate underneath the refrigerator, or do we want to make it all kind of one sort of big, long L-shaped bulkhead that's going on there? There was a lot that we had to think about and figure things out. Once we'd figured out what size and shape we wanted that particular bulkhead to be, the next thing we needed to do was to look at the existing piece of wood, because we'd cut out a whole bunch of other stuff, and figure out what angle that needed to be cut at. In order to cut that old 2 by 4 that supported the old engine, the old front cover of the engine, and the new engine that we installed 10 years ago has a much smaller footprint and can be a little bit further aft, which means that there's a little bit more foot room. And in our boat, every single inch matters. We've also changed this thought about the engine cover and with the old engine and what we had done before, we had the engine cover be actually part of our step down from the counter. And we were talking about going back to a full height ladder, meaning that actually the, the countertop will be conversely and a little weirdly far more usable because I didn't really use the countertop before because it was a place that people stepped on all the time. But if it's hidden behind the ladder, I should be able to use it much more easily, even though I don't have as much access to it. As we're trying to figure out how we're going to cut back that 2x4 and the piece of wood that goes along the 2x4, we realized that we had to figure out the angle for the ladder that goes all the way up to the companionway. And we had taken the ladder 
back to the local storage unit that we had because it was just taking up space on the boat. We had to traipse all the way back to storage. It's only about a five minute drive away. Come back, figure out a way to rig up that ladder so that it it ran the gamut from the floorboards all the way up to the companionway. And then we had to see where that line was and transcribe it onto the piece of wood on the side. All of this is all part of this conversation. All of these decisions that we had to make are decisions that went into deciding the conversation around how do we cut out the shape for this bulkhead. This was not a 20 minute job. It wound up taking most of the day to make all these different decisions that wound up affecting that one piece. So decision creep is as real as project creep in terms of time and in terms of the amount of time that it takes up for you to do things. And it wouldn't feel like making a decision should take that much mental energy and hard work, but it absolutely does. Boat projects are not for the faint of heart. I'm looking forward to sharing an anchorage with you, and we can share and commiserate about our boat projects and decision creep and project creep. But maybe most of our projects will be done by that. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. I hope you're staying safe and healthy during this time and that maybe you've got lots of time to make those decisions so that when you get back to the boat, decision creep won't be as big a part of your project creep as it might be otherwise. Have a spectacular week. We'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.